So what do you say after you've started a conversation with the girl so that doesn't get awkward? You know, what are some good topics to cover early on so that you keep her attention and she's eager to get to know you more? That's what we're going to cover in today's video. It's actually a module from my mastermind program that I wanted to give it to you about how to start communicating your value in a way that makes the girl feel comfortable as well. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Daniel and I help guys become men they can be proud of who attract women that they're proud to be with. And let's be honest, most men today are absolutely clueless and they don't know where to take the conversation. Even if they stumble in and say hello, it's just these awkward silences, the conversation's so boring, the girl's bored out of, out of her mind, or they go too far to the other end where they trying to say crazy stuff and it's coming across as a bit weird and a bit creepy for the girl. So this is extremely important that you have the courage to go up and start a conversation, but it's important to have a plan because courage without a plan won't take you very far. If I want to start a business, cool, that's a courageous step, but if I don't have a plan, there's a low chance I'm actually going to be successful. So like I said, this is a module from my paid program. So make sure you stay across right till the end because I'm going to give you some real life examples of students applying this stuff. So it's not just theory and you actually get to see some practical examples. So if you're on team masculinity and you want to make men better again, hit the subscribe button down below to show your solidarity and let's crack into the video. Okay, so today we're talking about phase three, which I call personal particulars. This is after you've started the conversation. This is after you've got the conversation going. How do you then build the conversation in a healthy way? If you haven't watched phase one and two, go back and watch that because that's really critical to start the conversation on the right foot. But then how do we now build and transition and keep the conversation going is extremely important because... No matter which way you want to look at it, any relationship has a healthy level of investment. Think of a marriage. That's a lot of investment, time spent together, done a lot of cool things together, shared a lot about each other with each other. And when we start up an interaction with a girl, whether we're just meeting her, if it's on a first date, we want to build this investment. This is a key part that a lot of men don't really get right or they do it in a really non-fun, interesting way. So... When you start off at the top, let's say you're just meeting a girl in the streets or at the grocery store, you're going to start saying, hi, I know it's kind of random. I saw you and I thought you, you look really stylish. You know, you're going to start off that conversation because that would be appropriate to say to someone that you just met. Now, if 60 seconds into the conversation, I'm like, tell me your deepest, darkest secret. That's too far down. It's too much of a big jump. So what we do in phase two with the personal particulars, it's about transitioning from, okay, cool, we've just started a conversation. Now, how do we make it interesting and engaging while we go into deeper, more interesting topics? We can't just jump there straight away. We have to get to know each other a little bit more. The interaction's starting to boil. It's starting to get a little bit warmer. And this is a great way to not only share some things about yourself, but also find out about the woman that you're, you're talking to. And then as you go on in the investment builds, you can ask, more direct questions, more intense questions, more interesting questions, and she'll be more willing to answer because you, you built it up. You haven't just jumped there straight away, okay? And you need to keep this in mind because most guys are jumping. They think, oh, I need to ask interesting questions and say all this interesting stuff, but it's too much too soon, and it just comes across as a bit weird and uncalibrated. So as I said, we're going through each of these seven phases. In the last video, we covered uh, phase one and two. Go watch that if you haven't, and there's a real-life example, so you can see that as well. Now we're going on phase three, and in the future videos, we'll go on to the other ones, okay? The other ones are where the real juice is, you know, where you're really creating a bond with the girl, where you're really getting to know her and telling her what you like about her. Those are all really important, but we can't just skip there. This is such a crucial phase, and it often wrongly gets called like, oh, this is a boring phase, like interview most questions. Well, I'm going to show you today how to do those questions and do it in a way where it's exciting. Do it in a way where the girl's eager to find out more and she's loving it and she's having fun as well while she's going through it. So like I said, at the end, I'm going to show you some real life examples of it so you can see for yourself, but this is just going an overview of what we're going through. Okay, so let's crack into the personal particulars. This is what I call the picture frame model. 
think of yourself almost like a blank canvas in the girl's mind you're just some random guy you know hi there how you doing blah 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 you've started a conversation she doesn't know anything about you even on a date a lot of guys mess this up they talk a little bit but the girl doesn't really know who they are just like this blank canvas and afterwards it's like yeah it was this guy his name was jim and yeah i think he's from canada and like yeah that that's about it it's not a very rich picture and what we want to do and i'm going to start off the process today is you build a rich picture a rich tapestry of yourself so when the woman thinks about you and your interaction together and your date together she's thinking like wow this cool guy he has all these hobbies and these interests and all these fun things that he's done but you say it in a way where it doesn't come across as boasting as as sounds way too eager so we need to build this up like i said we can't go too fast too soon that's where a lot of guys slip up with this so this is just getting to know each other the beginning initial phases so think of the picture frame of you of who you are as a person as, as who you are as a man who knows you have a career you might be a lawyer for example you might be from colorado uh, you might have traveled to japan you might enjoy reading you love reading autobiographies uh, you have a sister and a brother most guys they've talking to a girl for 10 minutes and the girl doesn't really know anything about them they're like yeah so the weather's pretty cool and like yeah like well how's this place been they're, they're actually not creating a rich picture of who they are and there's so much going on here and you need to be careful of you everyone has a lot of stories and interests and passions about their life but if you find yourself battling to you don't often communicate this when you're talking with the girl number one you're either battling with uh, I don't think I'm cool enough. I don't think I'm interesting. And then you want to go watch some of the other videos in terms of, of terms of how to help that. But also what it's coming down to is saying it in an engaging way with high quality attention, which we spoke about in a previous model. So she also has a picture frame. So in an ideal world, you sharing your picture and she's sharing hers and you're building it together. And it's this reciprocal thing. You're not just sharing your whole life story with she's not really sharing anything or the other way around where she's sharing a lot, but, but you're not sharing anything. You want to have equal investment and you're building it up along as you go. So maybe she's a school teacher. Maybe she's 24 years old. Maybe she wants to go visit the pyramids in Egypt. Maybe she's close to her parents. She enjoys reggae music. Her favorite movie's Avatar. Every person has all these things about themselves, hundreds of things. But when people are talking to a girl, it's like, it's like they don't have anything. It's like, well, I don't know. I'm just Dave or whatever. You need to be able to engage this and communicate this in, in an effective way. And it's good to think about some of these things before, even write them down, which I'll show you an exercise at the end here. Not to script out everything you say, but where you from, that story is not really going to change. So why not have a cool way in terms of communicating it? You're not making stuff up like, yeah, I own five Lamborghinis. No, but how can you put your best foot forward and communicate yourself in not a boring way? Like, yeah, I'm a software engineer. Like you can have a more interesting way of explaining that. So let's start going through this. Think of it almost like this graph. Now, Again, all of this is just a framework to help you communicate your value. These are not scripted lines. These are training wheels. The value is with you. The value isn't in the structure. The structure is just a way for you to communicate and funnel the value that you have. So after we've started an initial conversation, I'm going to show you some real examples after this. Again, this is how we can start building the conversation because most guys are like, hey, how are you doing? Nice dress. She's like, oh, thank you. They're like, uh, okay, well, have a nice day. So this allows you to build some time in the interaction. Again, if you're meeting a girl for the first time or on a date, it allows you to build some momentum so you can start to get the snowball going. And these are some helpful things to keep in mind. Again, don't think of it like I have to do everything. It's like a test. No, not at all. It's just some some pointers, some conversational pieces that you can use along the way. So maybe again, you find out where she's from. Now there's normally two ways to do this. I can either say, hey, uh, where are you from? And she could say, New York. Or I could say, you look like you're from Miami. 
And then she'll say, yes, I am. No, I'm not. I'm from California, whatever that is. So you don't always just want to go question, question, question. Where are you from? What do you do? How old are you? What do you like to do for fun? It's like too many questions and it feels very takey. So balance it out, especially on, early on between sharing statements. You look like you're from this. I bet, I don't know, something gives me the vibe like you work as a school teacher or something. So I'm using a statement and she'll either agree or she'll correct me. Remember, we're not trying to get it right here. We're giving the girl an interesting experience and an interesting experience is not a guy who's just like ask questions all the time. It needs to be a balance between questions and statements. So we can find out all these things about her, but we also want to share about us. There's different ways you can do this. You can do this in more just sharing. She's like, oh, I'm from this place. Like, oh, that's crazy. I'm actually from uh, Florida, blah, blah, blah. And you can just share it in that way. But there's another way you can do it where, again, we build investment where she's actually asking us questions. So this is a conversational tool that you can use known as a hook. So if someone tells me like, oh, I'm from uh, Arizona. I love living here. I'm like, wow, Arizona, that's interesting. That's actually pretty different from where I'm from. And I'll leave a bit of a pause, a natural social inclination to say, oh, so where are you from? And then I can share, oh, I'm actually from uh, Texas. And it was crazy like growing up in Texas. And you don't just want to give these one word answers. You want to elaborate a little bit, say something interesting. I'll, I'll show you in the examples exactly what that looks like. But you could say once she's finished sharing where she's from, you can say, oh, that's very different from where I'm from. Now, don't always wait. She might not 100% of the time ask something back, but it's a good way to see your value so far in the interaction. You know, is she interested enough where she's curious to find out more about you? That's all hooks really are, is they're giving the other person an opportunity to find out more about you. Okay, and then you can share about you and, and do it in an interesting way. Don't just say, I'm from Canada. You know, oh, I'm from Canada, but I actually moved to the States about five years ago because I actually got a real cool career opportunity down here. Oh, interesting. What career are you in? Oh, interesting. What opportunity was that? So you start to build the conversation and have some intrigue as well. Um, again, the girl could be talking about what she does for work, what she's studying. Oh, I work as a nurse. Oh, that's interesting. How do you get into that? She's talking a little bit about that. And um, then you can say, wow, it's cool that you found something that you're passionate about. Uh, I'm, I'm actually really passionate about the work that I do too. What do you do for work? Now she's going to start asking you the questions as well. Uh, or if you ask her, oh, like, do you enjoy your work? She's like, no, nah, I don't really enjoy it. I'm like, yeah, my work as well. I thought I was really going to enjoy it. But once I started there after like six months, I didn't really enjoy it. Oh, what do you do for work? Okay, so there's many different ways to do this. Again, this is not canned lines that you have to say. I'm just trying to give you some examples of, so it's not a one-sided conversation because normally guys can be like, oh, so you're from California. Oh, that's cool. You're a nurse. Oh, you're 25. That's interesting. And then it's like crickets because they don't know how to introduce topics about themselves or they haven't given the girl the opportunity to be able to ask them questions. And that's what conversational hooks do. Okay. And again, it's not a test. You don't have to get every single one of these right, like a little checkbox. It's more, again, you're gauging in the conversation, you're sharing your value of the man that you are, but it's also a good way for her, like I said, in the picture frame model to start to understand you and, and get to know you, you know, sometimes guys will have a 10 minute conversation with the girl They'll be like, oh, what's your number? Let's grab a drink or something sometime. And the girl's like, I don't even really know you. What she's saying when she says that, it's almost like the picture frame model. You haven't colored yourself in enough. I don't know enough about you, um, even though you might have spent a decent amount of time together. So you want to keep that in mind during the, the interactions. Again, you can tell about your age. Wow, you're actually pretty young. She might say, oh, well, how old are you? Uh, all of these different types of things. After you've gone through that, Again, you could say, wow, you're actually pretty cute. Uh, I'm curious, what do you do for fun though? So that more leads into the later steps around trial time, which we'll cover in upcoming training videos. Um, but it starts to, to bridge the conversation for you. Okay, so what I want you to do now is start to write out as an exercise, 
what is your origin story? You know, if the girl asks, where are you from? I'm, I'm originally from South Africa. It was like, oh, so where are you from? You know, it's like, wow, well, I'm actually originally from South Africa, but I left there a couple of years ago and I traveled to the States, uh, ended up staying in Asia for a while and also checked out South America. Um, so yeah, been on a bit of a trip. I can use the original thing of where I'm from, South Africa, but then I can add in other interesting parts of the conversation that open it up. You know, if someone asks you like, oh, what's your occupation? You don't just say, oh, I'm a software engineer. You can say something that's like, yeah, it's actually pretty crazy. Um, you know, like your phone that you're with all day. Uh, I basically help design some of the software that that you use on that phone. It's interesting. I like got really into software when I was younger, but I've also got a big passion around music and it seems very different, uh, but that's something that that's always appealed to me. Now she might ask you about music. So you can introduce one conversation and then you can branch off and talk about other things. So it opens up the conversation. If the girl's like, what do you do? And you're like, oh, I'm a accountant. She's like, uh, okay. And it's like, the conversation isn't going anywhere. So you want to see this. I call this concept putting meat on the bones. So think of this framework as like a skeleton, like where you're from, what do you do, how old are you, etc. But if, if I'm just like, oh, I'm from South Africa, oh, I work as a accountant and I'm 25. Cool. Well, that's 30 seconds and everything's gone. But you want to have a little bit of a back and forth going on. Yeah, she's sharing something about her, you sharing something about you. And there's a bit of a back and forward going on. Yeah, and you're making it interesting. It's not boring like an interview. You're throwing in teasers, you're making it engaging along the way as well, which I'm going to show you some real life examples of how to do this in a second. Because remember, it's not like army drill sergeant, you have to get everything right. There's a natural flow that comes into the conversation, but this is just very helpful. So conversations don't last two or three minutes and it's like, oh, I ran out of things to say. With this, you won't run out of things to say. You're gonna have at least a five to 10 minute conversation just going back and forth between these things. So for yourself now, after this training video, I'll show you some examples now, but write out for yourself, how do you talk about where you're from? How do you talk about what you do, et cetera, et cetera. Again, not so you have to say it like a canned line when you're talking to a woman or on a date, but just so you got some ideas, just so you've put some effort into it and you can say it in a fun, engaging way. So let's actually crack into some examples here. Okay, so let's actually listen to an example of seeing this in real life because that's where it really hits home. I want you to take a special note of him sharing where he's from, her sharing where she's from, what they do, et cetera, et cetera, and also the ways they make it fun and engaging so it doesn't sound super boring and, and like an interview. So let's play this out and I'll, I'll share some insights along the way. You don't sound like you're from here. Uh, I am from here. Okay. Yeah, morning. I would have guessed like... Houston or something. Houston? But, uh, <laughs> a lot of people say I have a Dallas accent. See again there. So it's not just like where you're from. It's like you don't sound like you're from here. It doesn't seem like you're from here. I was going to say Houston. She's like, Haha, no, I am actually from here. So again, you're getting to know her with interview mode questions, but she's laughing. She's having fun. She's she's enjoying it. So, okay, now I hear it. Yeah, but, you hear uh, it, yeah. <laughs> Are you from here? Uh, I live here now. Um, not originally from here, though. Okay, where are you from? Uh, like a little town outside New Orleans. Okay, that's uh, cool. Have you ever been there? Uh, I haven't been to New Orleans. No. Really? No, I haven't been. What are you doing with your life? I know. I was like, everybody tells me to go to our bourbon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So there again, you can add in like a little bit of teasing, you know, she's like, oh, so where are you from? He's like, oh, I'm from this little town outside of New Orleans. And, uh... She's like, oh, he's like, have you been there? She's like, no. He's like, what are you doing with your life? In a fun, playful way, but it's throwing in little teasers uh, along the way as you, you're going about it. So it's not all super, super boring. You can see examples of, of what that looks like. You must just be like a super like homebody, innocent, like no, nice little girl. Just on, the, just... Just on, the, just on the weekday, you know? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I have to keep up with grad school, so... You're not like a nice little like school teacher or anything oh, no. like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just like to grocery shop for fun. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. What do you uh, like? Now I'm curious. Before I go, what do you do? Uh, I'm in grad school, so I'm a grad. 
So again, yeah, she's talked about being in grad school, boom, boom, boom. Okay, cool. I got to go in a second, but I'm curious, like, what do you do? And now again, okay, we both know where they're from originally, the origin. Now it's like, okay, what do you do? Um, but it's a bit of back and forth as well. It's not just uh, straight to the point. It's sharing, a little bit of teasing as well. So this is what it looks like in a real life example. Grad student. Okay. Yeah, I just graduated. Oh, you're like in smart May. and cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, At I, least this part of you. Right? <laughs> I was like, you don't know what I look like. Could be a could be a train wreck. Right? I don't know. But... You'll never know. <laughs> so you must be what, like early mid twenties? Twenty two. Twenty two. Okay. You're way too young for me. Yeah, how old are you? How old do you think I am? Like 28, 29, 30. Ooh, you're aging me. I feel so no. 27. 27? Uh, okay. I was like. So again, he's like. Again, like, oh, so you look like 23 or something like that. And she's like, yeah, I'm 24. It's like, oh, uh, too young for me. She's like, wait, how old are you? Uh, and she's like, take a guess, you know, oh, 28, 29. Oh, my gosh, like, you, you're aging me. Oh, I, I'm this age. So, again, it's like going through all of these, but also making it fun and interesting and, and not super boring in the process. It's a, it's a good example of that. Damn. Well, I need to go get some Botox or something. Not Botox. <laughs> No, but uh, you seem cool. Like, what do you do for fun? Um, Other than like talk to gym. cute boys at the grocery oh, store. Oh, so now you can cute. Okay, <laughs> talk to you now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I just go to the gym right here. So. Oh, the uh, LA. LA Fitness? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I do that. So now he's sharing like, oh, what do you do for fun besides flirting with cute boys? And then she's giving a little bit of back and forth. Oh, I go to the fitness. I go to the gym. Boom. This is a conversation and, and how it's growing. And then I just go to a coffee shop, do homework for the rest of the day. I literally just stopped from doing that. So then oh, I yeah? can like, pick up some things that I need. I'm like curious what you're studying. I'm going to guess like healthcare. No. Or I'm not, I'm not a basic. Looks so like she must be studying to be like <laughs> no. a nurse or something. I have I don't my know. degree in marketing, okay. so I'm following and doing logistics. Marketing, now. but you're not basic. I mean, <laughs> that's not basic. That's not basic. Though. <laughs> a lot of girls don't. It's do like marketing. nursing's like eight out of ten basic, and really? marketing. Marketing's only like five out of ten. Okay, basic. Geez. Yeah. Okay. Only, only a little bit. Yeah. And now I'm doing logistics, supply chain. Logistics. Okay. Yeah. How did you get into that? Are you like super like? So again, here, yeah, this could be, oh, she's talking about, oh, I studied this and marketing and now she's like doing something in logistics. Like it could be boring, but again, it's, it's getting to know each other. It's starting to paint the picture and there's this playful flirtation going on in between as well. So it's a good way to, to balance it. This isn't so much about like generate crazy attraction, but it's like getting to know each other with that little bit of flirting sprinkled in to make it also uh, like a man to woman. You're not there just, just to be a friend either. You know about stuff, so it's like, oh, I want to control all the... Uh... Yes, <laughs> yes, yes and no. Um, I also, I, I was a, an accounting major before marketing, and I liked how okay. those two connected, so I was just like, let me just try supply chain and okay. see how they connect, just because supply chain is an overall business industry. Okay. If you would have done like accounting, we would have been in similar fields. Really? Are you in finance? Do I look like it? Yeah. That, do I just like... So again, there's like a little bit of a hook, you know, it's like, well, if you had done accounting, we would have been in similar fields. She's like, oh, what are you in finance? Like, like, what is it that you do? Okay, cool. Now the conversation's building and he gets to share also a little bit about himself. So it's got that good back and forth in terms of where they're from, what they do and, and sharing in a reciprocal way as the interaction progresses. So, so we'll listen to a little bit more of this, maybe one or two more, and uh, then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Screen finance. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. just a little bit of finance, but yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Cool. If you would have been an accountant, like we yeah. would have been too similar I, though. It's still like, my minor. Like, I minored in ooh, it, so. I don't know can, if we'll we get can, along We now. can argue back and forth, yeah. like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> we'll argue all the time, like I'll be right. Right, you'll be like, you'll be more right yeah. than I am. I only got a minor. I was like, I only took like sixteen. I know. Credits. I'll like always hold that over you. It's like who has the major you're and who's like, the minor? Right? Here? You're like you only did like sixteen credits. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything. Okay, so there again, you can hear the back and forth. There's also like a bit of a wee frame. It's like, oh, we're gonna argue about this stuff, but it's all like joking and and fun and friendly. But you can see some real examples of exactly how that plays out. Okay. Um, so let's listen to another one. 
Do you have like um like a little bit of an accent? Yes, I'm Persian. You're Persian, really? Yes. You're from Iran. Do you have like um like a little bit of an accent? Yes, I'm Persian. You're Persian, really? Yes. You're from Iran. Yes. Really? Everybody knows Iran these days <laughs> because of everything going on. Yeah, but That's I live crazy. here. For school? No, I I moved here like about six years ago. Okay, I do have to go in a second. I'm curious though, like um, so you're what then? Twenty six. Okay, so again, he's found out a little bit about her. Oh, you sound like you have a bit of an accent. She's like, yeah, I'm from Persia. Even if she wasn't, she's like, no, I'm from here. That's totally fine. You're just moving the conversation forward. Like, cool, I got to go in a sec, but you look like 26 or something like that. And he's starting to move through it, and you'll see how it balances out as the, the interaction progresses. Yeah. Did I look 26? <laughs> no, you look younger, but you said you moved here six years ago. Yeah, I moved here six years ago. Uh, I'm 23. So, oh, okay. I, yeah, I finished high school here. I did okay. the last two years of high school here. And then I went to community college, and this is my first part of here. I'm a transfer. Really? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, it's so far so good. I'm in the nursing school, so my program is a bit different from other majors. Nursing? Yeah. yeah you're, you're pretty uh, cute for like a nursing major, honestly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Cute nurses. <laughs> yeah, cute nurses. So again, he's adding a little bit of flirtation. Oh, you're pretty cute for a, a girl who's in a, a nursing major. And she's like, oh, thank you, like cute nurses. Again, it's adding in that little bit of a stuff so it doesn't become like too friends only. So it's good to sprinkle a little bit of this in while you're going back and forth, sprinkling a little bit in like a teasing, sprinkling a little bit in like a showing a little bit of intent, like, oh, you're actually pretty cute, blah, 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 is a good way to, to balance it out. That's tough, I feel like, for people. But yeah, that's cool. Yeah, like um, I don't go here, but I'm visiting a friend, but I love the campus. It's super nice. It is, yeah. Actually, mm. between all the campuses in LA, I like this one the most. So, so that's why you chose it, because of the nice campus? No, because of the program. Because of the program. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it, it wasn't my first priority, but definitely. Can you even hear the girl like almost qualifying a little bit. Oh, so you only chose it here because the nice camera. She's like, no, 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 because of the program. So it's again, it's a, it, it's a good sign. Her investing, her being interested in the yeah, conversation. I to stay in LA and uh, where's better than you still? LA. <laughs> Fair point. Although, like, I did go to Berkeley, so there's like a bit of a rivalry between oh, us. Oh yeah. So. Oh my God. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I don't like North Carolina. North California. I don't either. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah. Honestly, I like the school. I didn't like the people there. Yeah. People are too stuck up, in my yeah, opinion. It's, it's the vibe is really different than there. So. I think, I, I'm guessing like living here is much better. For sure. You, for you sure. live here now or are you still I, in North Cal? No, I grew up here. Oh, nice. And I went to school. You what? You went to school? Too. So I grew up here. Stayed here my whole life, then went up to Berkeley for school and graduated recently, and then I came back here. Oh, what did you study? I studied. So again, you can hear the conversations going. Now he's sharing where he's from, where he went to go study, and again, it's a it's a it's a nice conversation that that's beginning to build. But you can see the framework of what we went through in the training earlier being played out. But again, it doesn't look perfect. It's just a a direction. It's a framework that you can use. That again, the girl gets to know you, you get to know the girl, which is why we're there at the end of the day. Um, do you know cognitive science? No. So it's like, you know, like neuroscience psychology. Uh -huh. So it's like those two with like philosophy and computer oh, science nice. and other things of that sort. For me, I really like research. So I was working in neuroscience labs and then now I'm doing research like outside of labs. So for me, that's, um, that's super interesting. Yeah, that's so cool. So yeah, yeah, you're yeah. in searching now? You work there? I'm so kind of... You work in searching field? Yeah, so I'm kind of like in between um, in between career paths right now. So before I want, I had this whole plan of going to neuroscience graduate school to get a PhD. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, no, I don't want to be in a lab for like six to eight years straight. Um, I want balance in my life. And so I switched over to user experience. Yeah. If you're familiar with that? No. So, me personally, I'm big into fitness, like bodybuilding, things of that sort. And so, right now, I'm conducting research on people who use apps or fitness programs, things like that, uh, to see how they like it, what are they frustrated about, and then translate that. Uh, talk to the people. 
So again, yeah, I like what he's doing here in terms of he's talking about research and neuroscience and all these types of things, but he also adds in some of his own personal stories, some of his own personal uh, interests and hobbies. Like, oh, like I'm actually really big into the gym and bodybuilding and fitness. So what I'm doing there is I'm doing this and this. So you can start to, to bring in other topics as well while that's going on. Okay, so... Let's listen to one more. Again, I'm just giving you a couple different examples so you can get a feel for it. Like it might seem simple and in a way it is. Uh, it's just when you find yourself in these situations, it's good to have a reference. Okay, cool. This is what it looks like. It doesn't have to be perfect and, and you can move the conversation forward. So let's listen to one more and then, and then we'll wrap it up. Raised, yeah. I actually got more of a Florida vibe. Probably. No, I'm born and raised in Arizona. She is. I was hoping you'd be like Cuban or something no. crazy like that. <laughs> I'm born and raised here. Okay. I yeah. used to live in New York actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's so the girl is originally from Arizona. He used to live in New York. Okay, cool. Now we, we're starting to build from here. That's really cool. We have a lot of like, I don't know, Cuban people there. So no. Vibe there I'm born and raised. I'm okay. Born and raised. How come you don't have. Uh, sorority accent then. I, oh, I didn't even know. I do? You don't. Oh, I don't? Oh, thank yeah, God. You, you seem kind of cute, but if you had the sorority accent, I probably would walk away. Oh, no, I don't. Ew, no, so, that's not for me. So annoying. Yeah, yeah it definitely is. So, so again, there you can hear a little bit of the flirtation, a little bit of the intent coming in as well. Again, what I like about this guy is a, is a brown guy going up to a white girl, which can be intimidating for a lot of men, but he's going up there and he, he's making it happen. He's using the framework and it's uh, being effective. I think this ends up being like a 15 minute conversation. We'll only listen to the next 60 seconds or, or two minutes of it, but this is the foundation on which the rest is built. So you can get a, a feel for it. It was fake. Yeah. It very is fake, yeah. Could, could you tell? I'm actually not from here. I can't. Where are you from? What would you think? Let's see if, uh, let's see if you're a cultured girl or uh, <laughs> it's boring. I'm boring, I guess. Where are you from? I was curious if you were going to bite on the accent or just like the Aladdin look. That's why I asked. I have no idea. Okay. Where are you from? Okay. Um, I'm originally from India, uh -huh. but I went to a British Indian school. Yeah, that's where I saw the accent. Okay, now you're like, I okay. I saw the accent. I noticed the accent, and I was okay. like, yeah, that's not... You just didn't want to be wrong, I guess. I know, because that's awkward. I didn't want to be wrong, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So again, they're sharing a little bit about where he's from. And then I went to this type of school and he's like, oh, you didn't want to guess it because you didn't want to be wrong. She's like, yeah, I didn't want it to be awkward. You know, again, like, cool. I don't want to make a fool of myself here um, as he's building the conversation. I just, uh, I started at uh, Columbia in New York mm -hmm. and doing engineering and physics. Yeah, oh, that's And then cool. my advisor moved here uh -huh. uh, and I followed him. Oh, That's really? Are you a student here? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. What do you study? Business law. Business law? Yeah. <laughs> if you just said business, that would have been kind of a flag. But business no, law, business law what, yeah. is that, what does that mean? Corporate attorney. Corporate attorney. Yep. Why wow, you're like helping people sue other people. Kind of like, it's Help. basically like you write their contracts for the businesses. Mm. You're in charge of their rent. You're in charge of when they form the business, you basically take care of them. If you have to sue a business, I will. Yeah, you seem like the type that would. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly would. Uh, it's That's your job, I guess. Yeah. Uh, why, why though? It's such a specific niche. I wanted to be some, a lawyer, but I didn't just want to be a regular lawyer. I also wanted to do business. And when I saw the ASC... So again, this is a good example of like meat on the bone. She's talking about being a corporate attorney, but it's like, why though? Like, what about that? Or like, how did you get into that? Which I think he'll say in a second. It's like, cool, I'm expanding. Or so I'm like, oh, what do you do? I'm a corporate lawyer. Oh, that's cool. Uh, next topic, you know, unpack that and expand that a little bit. Uh, potentially can be a bit teasing as you, you're going through it as well. So you had business law. That was like the... And it was literally perfect match. for me. He literally, I'm not kidding. I have to go in a second. But, yeah, me uh, too. Uh, what is your favorite thing about business law? I think it's... I, well, I don't know. I basically just started. I'm a freshman. Oh, little baby. So you're like 18. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Oh. Sorry. It is what it is, guys. Yeah. Um, how old do you think I am? 23. Close, 20, 24. 
24, not bad. Yeah. Okay. Would you say you're actually mature for an 18 year old? Yeah, I don't, yeah. Are you, are you mature I'm for I'm very age? mature for my yeah. age, okay. I would say so. I've gone through things. Yeah, so again there, I like she's almost kind of like proving herself a little bit. I'm very mature for my age and as he's going through. So again, it's not like the most amazing thing you've ever heard in terms of interaction, but it's a really good framework that you can use, you know. So I want you to go out there, apply this stuff, start coming up with your own that you can share. And um, I'll see you in the next training video. Bye-bye. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the like, hit the subscribe button down below, drop a comment. What was your biggest takeaway from the video today? And uh, if you want to watch the other videos in the series, check up here. There's uh, parts before this with real life examples and parts after this as well. So make sure you go out there and apply it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.